So we're here at the MAV TB500 with a little fuse speed to design program and mechanical engineer Hilary Pauchek. Welcome. Thank you. So you've been having a blast here with everybody, um, but we learned chatting with you offline um, that your work is actually incredibly fascinating, um, an extension of which was featured in a sense at the Olympics this year. Tell us a little bit about it. I'm a 30-year uh, practicing mechanical engineer, but 20 of those years is in a uh, highly uh, uh, segmented field called uh, lower limb prosthetics. And I'm proud to be associated with some of the first fundamental designs that were uh, utilizing carbon fiber. Carbon fiber composites is heavily used in the race car technology. So I was quite fascinated to uh, come here and experience and see the applications of what they're doing in IndyCar. Uh, but in the prosthetics world, uh, myself and a small core group of people uh, engineered and devised uh, the first lower limb prosthetics out of carbon composite and utilize it in a dynamic bending fashion rather than in most cases like here even in the race car technology or in aerospace which is rigidity you know lightweight and rigid structures. Yep. We take composites and utilize their high strength and energy storing potential and to use them in a dynamic bending environment. And so we devised essentially what is referred to as energy storage uh, lower limb foot ankle devices. And you mentioned uh, what was really kind of a culmination after all of these years of work in here is for the first time, at least in the real public eye, at the London Olympics, uh, a bilateral amputee, Oscar Pistorius from South Africa, uh, was running on the carbon blades, the cheetah blades that we call them, that I had a hand in designing. I was one of the chief principal engineers working on that project. I want to know, um, with, the, with Pistorius, obviously, and some of uh, the competitive runners there, they're, they're using it in competition and they're running really, really fast. They're in incredible shape. But is that a device that you could use if you um, were a double amputee but not an athlete? Those devices can be configured in different ways for different levels of amputations, different uh, uh, capabilities of certain patients. and so. Using energy storage, lower limb prosthetics is really fundamental in, in, in bringing back, you know, something that has perhaps been lost from that individual. But it doesn't necessarily rule out an electromechanical solution, right? Not at all. Not at all. Uh, my expertise in this particular technology I work with is uh, it's really simple mechanical designs. And that's really the novelty of it is uh, to try to get simple mechanical function and novel designs without a lot of complexity uh, that can really kind of function independently of powered systems or intelligent systems, uh, electronic systems that uh, really are, are, are starting to come out more today. Um, you'll see the best usages of that sort of stuff in upper extremity prosthetics, in hands and arms and elbows and things like that where you need power. Um, it is uh, a bit of a, uh, uh, you know, if you want to say, a, a conflict right now on whether or not there is high value to these electromechanical systems that can be used uh, in lower limb prosthetics, but it's being done by some very specific, uh, talented people right now, and they're getting closer to using that because sensor technology, uh, accelerometers, uh, uh, you know, force detectors, pressure sensors, all those things are now becoming miniaturized, the control electronics, and I think there's going to come a point in time where now we'll be able to start to utilize that in very similar fashion that we're using, you know, the great uh, characteristics of carbon fiber composites in, in lower legs and foot ankles. So with, with carbon fibers, it is easy as sort of mixing it up, putting it in a mold and you're done. I can't imagine it's that easy. No, it's, um, it's very similar to the same technology here is that uh, carbon fiber itself is, uh, is a very stiff uh, uh, material, uh, very strong in tensile. And uh, what it's done, of course, is to try to get that to be uh, impregnated into a matrix, and a resin matrix of epoxy or some sort of adhesive. And that's how the term composite comes up. So, 
uh, in the case of uh, in race cars and even in the artificial feet is that carbon fiber, very thin and small, has to be oriented. And it literally is almost like the grain and, and wood, is that if you take the grain and wood, is that if you bend it across the, the grain, then you'll find that it has its enhanced stiffness to it. If you try to go against the, uh, or uh, a side to the grain there, or, or perpendicular to the grain, then you're gonna get a very weak structure. So very similar with carbon fiber. And so the manufacturing technologies is to take that material and to orient it into plies, pretty much like a phone book, and then stack these plies up. You may orient them in different positions and get different characteristics of that case of these uh, sprinting feet, like what Oscar Pistorius is wearing, a very highly engineered tapering structure which changes the, uh, the deformation of it under load. And so you'll get different types of, of uh, bending dynamics based on where the load is at any point in time. Well, thanks for coming out on the track and sitting here in 102 degree weather and telling us about your technology. That's great. Happy to do it, Brian.